Hey everyone, welcome back. In the previous video, we got the flatless carousel set up, so make sure you check that out first. Today's video will be adding the animated indicator to show the progress through the onboarding slides. The animation itself is fairly simple, but the process of tying it into which item in the flat list is displaying is the real interesting part. You'll really want to see that. Let's get to coding. Starting where we previously left off, we're displaying a horizontal flat list with a carousel effect. Let's add a new component to display the indicator. We'll call it paginator and fill in some boilerplate. In the onboarding component, we'll import the paginator, then render it, passing in the slides as a data prop. We'll need access to the amount of items that are in the slides array. In the paginator component, let's accept the data prop. We'll style the containing view with a flex direction of row and a height of 64, so they'll display horizontally. Now we'll map through the data array, needing just the index, and return a view with a style called dot. Since this will be looped over, we need to give it a key, which will be the index converted to a string. Let's give the dot some styles. as well as a width of 10 for the time being. It'll be animated shortly, but needs a value now, so it will display. You can see this is what it looks like now. Notice it's showing four dots because we have four slides in the slide array. Because this is dynamic, you can add as many slides as you like without having to change any of this code. Back in the onboarding component, let's also pass in the scroll X position that we calculated in the last video and accept that as a prop in the paginator component. We can get rid of the text component and import animated and the use window dimensions hook. Then get the width of the screen from that hook. We'll create a variable for the input range that will be an array with three values. The current index minus one times the width, the index times the width, and the index plus one times the width. These correspond to the previous dot, the current dot, and the next dot. To calculate the dot width, we'll interpolate the scroll X position, passing in the input range, giving it an output range of 10, 20, and 10, which will be the width of the previous current and next dots. The current dot will be twice as wide. It's important to add extrapolate clamp, as you'll see shortly. Let's convert the view to an animated view, and we'll change the width from 10 to the new interpolated value. You can see that the current slide indicator is now wider than the other ones, and it animates smoothly between them. Looks like I didn't get rid of the scroll indicator. Let's fix that. Better. Looking pretty good now. We can make the current indicator a little more obvious by giving the other one some opacity. Similar to the width, we'll create opacity with an output range of 0.3, 1, and 0.3, and pass that as a style. And now all but the current indicator will be lighter. I'll comment out the extrapolates to show you what it would look like without them. Clamping it will only allow it to be the values we provide. Otherwise, it will continue to extrapolate the width to nothing and the opacity to nothing. So that'll do it for today. I hope you learned something from this. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. Make sure you're subscribed. In the next video, I'll be showing you how to create the button animation and its functionality to move the flat list forward, as well as continue on to the actual app after the final slide. Hope you're having a great day. Go code something awesome. A huge thank you to Lawrence, Raphael, Good, Nabil, Jonathan, Marwin, Michael, Esco, Kevin, Joseph, Hassan, Felix, along with all my other patrons. You're all amazing.